the fundamental theorem of calculus is the idea that links derivatives, antiderivatives, and finding areas under curves. Before we understand it, or before we even state it, uh, we need some notation. Uh, and it might also be helpful if, um, if you've seen any of this b b before, if you could sort of roll back the clock uh, to a time when you, when, uh, before you've seen any of this stuff. So we can kind of start f from scratch. I think that uh, starting here with no prior knowledge is probably the best way to go to, com to keep confusion to a minimum. Now, uh, if these ideas are uh, improperly introduced, as they so often are, then it can lead you to merely know what the theorem is and be able to state it without understanding why it is what it is. And I want you to understand this completely, so here goes. Uh, first, we're going to start off with a bit of notation, just invented n notation. Uh, it's going to be this symbol, all right. A there, B there, and a function on the inside. All right. This is uh, this symbol right there. It's a sort of an elongated S with an A down here, a B up here, some function on the inside, and a dx that just kind of goes along with uh, this long s here. Uh, this symbol refers to the net signed area. Net signed area. Uh, between the curve f of x and the x-axis. It is called a definite integral. Uh, and the idea of figuring it out is called definite integration. Now, it looks fancy, and it's got a bunch of $2 words associated with it. It's called the definite integral. It's weird. Um, but don't think too much into it. Um, what it means is what matters. And the basic idea is simple enough. It just basically means the area under a curve. Now, it does and it doesn't. Uh, notice I said net signed area, not just area. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but for now, I do want to do a couple of examples of what this could mean with um, unspecified functions. So if I got a function here, right, if, uh, if I got like this, say, call this f of x, as I often will. So let's say that this is 1 and 3 and 5. Right? If I write this, uh, the definite integral, it's read from 1 to 3 of f of x dx, that's a reference to this area. Right? Its value, if it, if it could have a value, stands for the area of this region. And if I wrote uh, the integral from 1 to 5 of f of x dx, that would be a reference to the area from x is 1 to x is 5 all the way. It would be all this. Uh, now here's where the net, e where, where the net idea comes in. If the function is below the, uh, the x-axis, right, uh, so we get a function that's like, say, this, and say this is f of x, and suppose this is 1 and this is 3. Uh, if you're talking about this, the integral from 1 to 3 of something like this, it's not going to be the area, it's going to be the, the negative of the area. Right. So suppose that this area underneath the axis is known, suppose that the area is 10 square units. The definite integral from 1 to 3 would not give you 10. Its value would be defined as minus 10. And now that's just how we're choosing to define this thing. All right. If, it's, if the curve is under the x-axis, the area gets counted as a negative quantity. And there's a really good reason for that. Um, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Uh, you just have to understand it. And the same thing, something similar, I would say predictable, happens if the function is some part over the x-axis and some part under the x-axis. So suppose we have, say, that this is 8 or something, and this is f. Uh, when we talk about, say, definite integral from 0 to 8, of this function, dx. Okay, 
from here to here, it's going. the value of this is going to give you the area of this region minus the area of this region. That's how it works. So if it's known, for example, that the area of this region is, say, 10, and if it is known that the area of this region is 20, then the value of this definite integral would be 10 minus 20 or minus 10. Similarly, if we had only done this from 0 to this point here, the value would have been just regular 10. And if we had done it from here to here, the value would have been negative 20. So there's kind of like a cancellation thing happening here. All right, If the curve is above the axis, uh, the area gets counted as a positive quantity. If it's below the x-axis, it gets counted as a negative quantity. Now, so far, uh, in all but the simplest cases, uh, we're not going to be able to get actual values for these expressions. And at this point, that's, not all, that, 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 that's really not important anyway. Uh, we'll have to content ourselves with merely having a symbol to represent what we're talking about. It stands for something that, at the moment, we might not be able to calculate. For, uh, think of it kind of like this. Kind of like uh, when we write radical 2, uh, this is really just a symbol for some number that we know exists, such that when you square it, it equals 2. Now we know that it's approximated by 1.414 and on and on and on, but it's a number that we can never actually write. Um, so since it's something that goes on and on forever, it's something that we really can't p p put our hands to, so we sort of cooked up a symbol just to stand for it, just to represent it. That's how you should think of this notation. All right? Think of it as something that stands for something that we um, we're trying t to find. But I do have a couple examples of what I mean, uh, number uh, ex ex expressions where, where we can find it exactly. So if I, if I were to write just this and not supply a graph, it's, uh, 2 to 6 of just 3 dx, if I just write this, the way that you're supposed to understand this is the area underneath the 3 function, so let me just draw that out, that will be f of x equals 3, so that's a constant, from 2, from x is 2 to x is 6. All right. So this definite integral refers to the area of this region here, which we know is just a rectangle of length 4 and of height uh, 3. All right. So this, the actual value of this is uh, 12, just the area. Similarly, uh, we could do it with some simple functions. If I say the definite integral from, suppose, 0 to 6 of x plus 1 dx, this symbol represents uh, the area of the function x plus 1 from 0 to 6. So this, this thing represents the area of this trapezoid. So we would just do a little bit of geometry from 0 to, to 6. It's, um, well, the, it's, a, it's a trapezoid, so half the height times the sum of the bases. So the height is 6, half of that is 3, and the bases are uh, 7 and 1, so that's 8 times 3. So the value of this is 24, because the area under the curve is uh, 24. And similarly, if we were to say, just another quickie, the definite integral from, say, minus 3 to 3 of x dx. This, is a, this symbol is a reference to the net signed area under the curve x. Which, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, x is this. All right, let me get rid of that. That's this. From minus 3 to 3. So you can see, because of symmetry, these areas are the same, and the value of this definite integral would be um, 0. So we can use geometry for some of these, uh, but for anything more complicated than that, anything that has like a bend to it, even for something simple, uh, for functions that we totally understand, like 0 to 1 of x squared dx. Now, we know what area that's in reference to, right? We know that's the area under the x squared curve from 0 to 1, but it, we don't have any way of computing it because it's not made of you know straight line segments or parts of circles or anything. We just know that. So we just have to content ourselves for the time being uh, to.
to just have a symbol that goes with the area under the curve that we might want to actually find. Um, I do want to talk a little further about the properties of this notation before I quit. Uh, one of them, and that now keep in mind that we're just in this notation is just something that people made up and we're attributing these properties to it because we want it to make sense. So, uh, one of them is, if I could zoom in a bit here, one of them is this, if we integrate, if we ever come across something like a to a of f of x dx, we're going to define this to be zero. No matter what. The way that you could look at this is the area, doesn't matter what the, the function is, but the area under a point, right, from a to a, is just nothing, right? There's no area there. So we're going to define that uh, as a uh, property. We'll call that property one. Property number two is uh, sort of a transitivity deal. We want uh, the definite integral. We want this to make sense. We want it to be nicely defined from a to b of f of x dx. If we take that and we add that to the integral from b to c, of f of x dx, then we want that to equal the integral from a to c of f of x dx, right? That that should make sense. We could get a simple drawing for that one too. No matter what the function is, right? Say here's a, and here's b, and here's c, right? So if we take the net signed area from A to B, in this case that's this positive area, and then we add that to the definite integral from B to C, which looks like it will be in total, if this is drawn to scale, uh, we would expect that from B to C would be a net positive number because this area appears to be larger than this area. We would want that to equal the, the, uh, uh, the definite integral from A all the way out to C. So, uh, to illustrate that, let's suppose that the area of this is 10, and suppose that the area of this, the area of this little sliver there is like 1, and let's say that the area of this region here is 4. Uh, the area, the definite integral from A to B would be, a, would have a value of 10, plus the definite integral from B to C, in this case, since the 1 part is underneath and the 4 is above, it would be 4 minus 1, which is 3, and we, we would want, we would expect that to be the entire thing, or, right, plus 3 to give us 13. So that's, that's, you know, that's kind of a reasonable way to, uh, uh, it's a reasonable claim to make about such a d definition, right, because of the way it's constructed, it's basically just adding areas. Uh, the last one that's maybe not so obvious um, is, we're j just going to say this, if we say uh, from B to A of f of x dx, we're going to say that if we switch the, ba if we take a definite integral and we switch the, uh, the boundaries, then it's going to take the opposite sign of what it would be before it were switched. Now, what does that mean? All that, that it, it looks like it might be complicated, and, and I know a lot of people, they think automatically that um, uh, something is going to be negative. But I don't want you to think of it that way. I want you, rather, I want you to, to think about it as, if I said, what's this, uh, say, uh, the integral from um, 1 to 0 of 1 minus x, dx. If I asked you for this, I would expect you to say, oh, well, 1 is 0, that's a, a little weird. Usually the number that's less goes on the bottom, so what I can do is I will say this expression will be the opposite of whatever number I get for this, uh, 1 minus x dx. And we could figure out what that is, because uh, I'm kind of getting crowded here, but we could fit it in. Uh, 1 minus x is this function. So this integral here before the, the negative symbol means the area of this section here, and since it's just a triangle whose base and height is 1, uh, this is equal to 1 half. So this 
is going to equal the opposite of one half. So all, all that means is that if you have some definite integral expression whose value is positive, if you flip the boundaries, it means that it's going to take on its opposite sign. Let me just do that one more time. So if you have uh, some function, again, doesn't matter what it looks like, I'll say, let's just say uh, it's below the axis. We'll say that this is 0 and say 5. And suppose that the area of this region happens to be 7. If I were to ask you, uh, this, well here, this we would define as from 0 to, from zero to 5 of f of x dx, that value would be negative 7, because from 0 to 5 it's below the axis. So if I ask you for from 5 to 0 of f of x dx, you don't necessarily, it's not necessarily going to be a negative number. It's simply going to be the opposite of what it would be if the signs were switched. So you would know that this means the opposite of the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x dx, which we know that this is negative 7. So the total answer to this, the value of this, would actually be positive 7. So uh, when the, the boundaries are out of order, right, uh, the, the value of the definite integral is going to take the uh, opposite sign of what it normally would if the boundaries were, if the, the lower boundary were actually less than the upper boundary. And uh, so now we have the notation and the properties of this thing, and we're almost ready for understanding how to evaluate these exactly using the fundamental theorem. The next part of this should bring it all together. We just need one more concept.